Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to create a very simple PD controller for trajectory tracking with a Unity car. So the problem we're solving is the following. We have a trajectory, a timed trajectory, so there's a point moving along the trajectory, which is a red dot here with a given velocity, and we want to control the blue dot uh, to follow that point on that trajectory. So kind of like that. Uh, and in fact, the blue dot is going to be a car, uh, uh, the unity car um, that is shown in this video. So, uh, and the task of the car, so, so this, the car in the middle is supposed to track the other car, and as you can see, and now it's converging on the same position and speed as the other one. And now we're going to do a disturbance, moving it back, just to show how it kind of tracks. It overshoots a bit, and then it breaks and converges to the proper position. Uh, we push it to the side, and it converges once again. Uh, and then we push it forward, so now it has to drive back. Uh, and converge towards the given trajectory. So this is uh, what we're aiming for. So how do you track a trajectory with a PD controller? Well, it's not that difficult. Uh, so a standard PD controller works like this. The desired acceleration is the sum of the position error and the velocity error. Uh, each multiplied by a, a coefficient. So you measure the position error uh, and multiply that by some kp, and then you measure the velocity error in purple here and multiply by another coefficient kd, and then you add these, uh, and that is your desired acceleration. And then you apply this acceleration to the blue dot uh, so in this car, the blue dot is going to be, sorry, in this problem, the blue dot is going to be a car. So how do we apply the control to a car? Well, uh, it's not that difficult either. So you just need to divide this desired acceleration into components, one that is kind of along the direction of that the car is driving, and that is going to be your gas pedal slash brake input, and then uh, along the other direction, which is going to be your steering wheel input. So basically, if the car is driving uh, eastwards, like in this example, and you want to have a desired acceleration as the black vector, uh, you divide it into the two components of uh, the pink and the yellow. So uh, a bit of uh, an acceleration forwards and, and a lot of steering to the left. So let's see two examples here. In the top case, uh, uh, the trajectory we're trying to track and where the car we're trying to track has the red velocity vector uh, and our car has the blue velocity vector and the desired acceleration is the black vector uh, up here. So in this case, we're a bit behind and a bit too slow. So that means the desired acceleration is uh, a soft right turn and a lot of gas. Whereas in the other example, we're a bit ahead and, and the velocity is a bit off. Um, so the desired acceleration is actually turning hard right uh, with no gas. In terms of code in Unity, it would look like this. Uh, it's part of the fixed update uh, uh, method. And the first part here, uh, we, we keep track of the target, the target position, and then we, we estimate the velocity by taking the difference, dividing by the fixed delta t, and then we keep track of the old position so that we get a new update each uh, instance this guy is called. Uh, and then we compute the position error here in green, uh, we compute the velocity error in purple, uh, and then we compute the desired acceleration like this. Uh, and then we just need to project this onto these two directions of transversal and uh, longitudinal like this. 
And then we input it down here, and this is just for debug purposes, drawing these uh, lines that you saw in the previous slide. So what about the parameters kp and kd? p is proportional to the position error, and d is differential, uh, that is the velocity error. Uh, well, basically, so this is how, how it looks once again. So increasing the, the differential gain here uh, reduces overshoot and reduces oscillation because that uh, pays more attention to, to errors in velocity. We can be kind of at the right position, but having a velocity that points the wrong way. Uh, increasing uh, K, KP here, on the other hand, uh, improves responsiveness, kind of pushes you harder to, to, uh, to where you want to be in terms of position errors. Uh, however, uh, uh, you need to decrease both of these if you want to have a smoother action. So if you increase both of these, it's going to be a very jerky, kind of high acceleration, high steering, high braking, and so on. on. And at some points, obviously, your actuators are going to saturate. Yeah, but just uh, seeing how this looks. So we have the, uh, we're going to have the uh, parameters down here, kp and kd. And we start out with zero kd uh, and small kp. So as you can see, this is not very good tracking here. We're oscillating, we're overshooting. Uh, so now we're going to set a bump up kd to one, and the oscillation just disappeared. Um, yeah, so it's key, but you can see there's kind of an error here that, that decreases very slowly. So we're going to bump up KP uh, to one as well. And now you can see that the uh, position error also uh, decreases uh, in a nice fashion. So now we're kind of disturbing the system by pushing us in a different direction. As you can see, it kind of tracks, comes back to where it should be. So now it's way ahead, so it needs to turn back uh, and get in position. So this is kind of how it works. That's pretty much it.